DA, let's get back into the book now. Let's talk about the S. What is sin? What exactly does that mean? People have heard the word, but they don't necessarily know what it means. So can you explain what is sin and what exactly does that mean? Absolutely, man. Sin is breaking the commandments of God. It's falling short. It's missing the mark. It's it's all of those um, theologically. That's what we would call it. Um, But on the block, uh, the way that we would say it is, I'll tell you what I told a young cat. There was a young cat, man, I was talking to a few years ago on the street, and his name was Felix. And Felix was... um, Tell him he was a born again believer. And I'm like, yo, bet it up, cat. Like, I'm like, yo, give me uh, give me the gospel. And he looked at me, you know, same thing like I said before. But then I said, okay, well, let me help you, man. Let's start with the doctrine of sin. And he looked at me and he was like, what? I'm like, sin, bro. You ain't ever heard of sin? He was like, nah. So I looked at I looked at old boy, and this is the winter, so we, we both got our bubbles on. And I'm like, um, okay, I'm like, yeah. And so I'm like, yo, man, um, I see you rocking black and gray. Okay, so I'm like, so what set you run with? He's like, I run with that East Side 15th Street. And I'm like, that's what's up. I'm like, so yo, let me let me ask you something. I'm like, where, where you stay at? So he told me the street that he lived on. I'm like, yo, okay, that's two blocks away. I said, yo, check this out, man, because we got about like eight international gangs operating in that neighborhood. And so I told him, yeah, man. And so I told him, I said, look, I said, if I walked up to your crib in the spring and I had on some red dickies and some red chucks and a white, you know, uh, a tall tee, and I had on a red KC fit rock to the, to the left, yo, with a bandana hanging out my back. And I walked up to your porch, and I'm like, hey, yo, Felix, man, walk with me through the park, man, to the corner store. Would you roll with me? And he was like, heck no, nah, I wouldn't roll with you, man. I'm like, why not? He was like, you got all that red on, man. Like, you wouldn't even make it inside of my house, man. My cousins would smash you right there on the spot. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, because my clothes would be in a fence, right? He's like, yeah, man. Like, you can't walk up in our neighborhood with that on. I'm like, yeah, and you probably wouldn't walk with me through Bub Park because we'd probably get shot. He's like, exactly. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of like sin, bro. We was all born with the wrong clothes on. We can't even get into the household of faith because our clothes are in a fence to a holy God because we're dirty, filthy, and grimy, yo. And he was just like, oh, man, for real? I'm like, yeah, every command in Scripture that you were broken, James 4, 17 says the good things that you know that you should do when you haven't done them, yo, that's sin too, bro. So you get it both ways. He was like, man, I never knew that. And I'm like, yo, that's the that's the reality of sin. And I said, but then that only sets up the beauty of the cross, yo. So then, so then when cats say, so what is sin? It's yo, I go back to the to the to the analogy of the drug game. Like if 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 drug dealers, man, want to work their way up, they start nickel and diamond. You know, they push little bags of weed here and there. You know, then they get put up on game to, you know, whatever something else could push a little bit more weight. So then they say, look, man, I'm tired of I'm tired of being on the corner. I want to be that middle dude, man. I want to begin to set cats up so i'm going to deal with the cat who is the, the the main supplier so so the whole goal of any cat is there's more money if you end up eventually becoming the supplier so you got to work your way up in, in the drug game but the reality of it is man is that you know you, you put your time and you put your work in pretty soon you become a middleman well that supplier is going to tell you yo here's two things number one as long as you move my weight we're good i'll give you an unlimited amount of supply of weight as long as you keep moving my product so you keep doing that and we're good. We'll keep this relationship. But I'll tell you what, if you ever get pinched and you ever get pulled in by the 5 you ever get kicked in by the DEA, you put my name out there. If you do that, you're dead. That's your life. That's it. You're disposable. Someone else will take your place. So basically, uh, a supplier will tell that dude, you do this and we're good. And if you don't do this, then we'll be good. Same thing in the Garden of Eden. God was like, yo, I will give you an unlimited amount of life, eternal life. And you will always possess this as long as... You obey my command by being fruitful and multiply, represent me well, and as long as you don't eat from the tree of that garden. Well, Adam fell into sin, introduced it to this world, death entered, and that's what we see in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. The reality is in uh, Genesis chapter 3, that's where we see that story unfold. And basically, man, Adam died spiritually that day. And so it's the same concept, and it's all about relating those street concepts to cats on a block, and we can parallel them with biblical realities and just say, yo, God said the same thing, yo. And what you see on these streets, what you see on the news, what you see in the joint, everything, yo, all that is a result from that one dude's one one faulty move to disobey God and break his command. And sin was introduced to our reality. Or radio.